Ladies and gentlemen, a man that needs no introduction. He has, in a short time, really, I don't think Mike has been doing this that much longer than me, built an extraordinary business. He's a good friend. I'm extremely honored to have him on the stage. All right, get loud for me. Mike, feel safe. How you doing, guys? Give it up for Trey. What a great event this week, right? Great. All right. So uh, we got one hour. I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, the slide says, the single most effective way to sell anything online. And this is the system that earns our company over $21,000 every day. The reason why I didn't put $21,473.86 is I didn't want it to look like a ClickBank sales letter. <laughs> Because this is true, and I'm going to go over it with you. Does anybody have any idea what this system is? What's that? Somebody said over here. Automated webinars, exactly. And I'm going to break down uh, what we're doing, uh, why, why it's effective, what you need to focus on, maybe some of the things that are a little bit more uh, intangible and not as obvious that, uh, that you may think. Exactly, automated webinars. So <clears throat> uh, Rich Sheffern, you guys all know Rich, right? Uh, Rich Sheffern uh, has a report called um, EEDM. It stands for Evergreen Event Driven Marketing. How many of you guys have read that? Just curious. Okay, yeah, you pay about 97 bucks a month to be part of that, uh, that club with Rich. Rich shared this with me, and it had um, just uh, a major, major effect on my business and the direction that we went in over the last year. Um, but what about the product launch, right? You know, uh, we know a lot about the product launch. Should we still do product launches? The truth is yes, there's a lot of uh, pros to the product launch. Some of them are, they're very good for branding, right? You know, uh, a lot of the guys that have been on stage over this, this last few days probably um, became popular due to a product launch. Uh, we all know they bring in a lot of, a lot of cash. Jeff Walker, uh, Andy Jenkins, Video Boss, they've shown a lot of the case studies from marketers. Uh, that are outside as well of just the internet marketing niche and we've seen you know the type of money that can come in in just 24 hours or in the first week uh, obviously when you're launching a product when you're bringing it out it's a great way to introduce your product to the marketplace doing a list in whatever niche you're in obviously you're getting traffic sources from some of the people of biggest influence in your niche and you can usually build a list on the, the shy end of 15,000 and we've gotten as high as 52,000. Uh, our most successful launch for list building was LaunchTree. Uh, but uh, with affiliate.com, uh, combined with the two different launches, we got over 50,000 with the two different launches. Uh, but the problem with the product launch is it's, it's not a business model. Uh, it should supplement your business, something it took me probably too many years to figure out. And there are some cons. Uh, and the cons are, number one, it's very taxing. It's taxing on you, your team, and your resources. You tend to operate you know, in those four quadrants, what they call urgent, important, and you really don't want to be operating your business in urgent, important. You want to be operating on not urgent, important, meaning nothing ever becomes urgent. Because if you're always working on urgent, important things, then you're not doing the important things until they become urgent. And then you're just running around like a chicken without a head. Who's, who here's done a, a product launch before? All right, you guys know what I'm talking about, about those last 48 hours before the web page goes live and how stressful you know, those things can be. And you know, people are trying to get in touch with you and you're like, oh man, I haven't done email in seven days. Okay, and that's what I mean. It's very taxing on, uh, on your, your, your team and your, your resources. As well, um, you're getting so many customers all at once. If you have a low-end product, you could be getting 7,000 customers, which is a good thing because of the money you're making, but you're getting 7,000 customers all at once. If, if it's a high-ticket item, you could be getting 1,000 customers all at once. It's very difficult for your, for your help desk to keep up with, with those tickets, and the customers start getting a little bit upset. <clears throat> These things can hurt your reputation because uh, you're putting too much through the pipeline all at one time. Help desk tickets can get backed up, uh, especially if it's a new product and there's a lot of bugs out there, it can hurt your reputation uh, because you're trying to put a good product out there, but the first time it hits the market, you have a thousand people out there saying in the forums that it's not working uh, and they want to get their money back and things like that. <clears throat> also, it's, a, it's an all or nothing go for broke model, meaning you're putting all your eggs into one basket and you know, hoping that you know, this is going to be that million dollar day and sometimes you have a very good launch and sometimes 
things don't always go as planned. And uh, I can tell you, it's happened to me, uh, probably three or four of my launches did not go as planned, thinking maybe there's going to be the Midas touch, and the next thing you know, things don't always go well. <clears throat> the funny thing is, with Affiliate.com, we had a very, very successful first launch. We thought we could just load it up there the second time and possibly do the same thing. Not always the case. So it's a go-for-broke model, and if you're building a business this way, and you're expecting on uh, these things to come in, or this is you know, the cash flow you're expecting and it doesn't come in, it leaves you a little bit high and dry. <clears throat> Here's another thing. You need all your affiliates to promote all at the same time normally when you're doing a product launch. So you've got you've to, it's like herding sheep. You've got to get the entire industry that you work with all coordinated at the same time. And if you're not ready to go that day and you need to postpone it for a day or a week, they're usually going to be committed somewhere else and then you had your shot and you know, things aren't going to go, go well. As we said, urgent, important, and of course, it's exhausting. I know firsthand. I did a lot of product launches over the years. There's a lot of pictures with me online with a lot of you know, black circles under my eyes, and they came most likely from the product launches. Uh, and finally, it's not a business model. Uh, it's really an addiction. You know, uh, I think it was Brad Fallon said at our seven-figure code, uh, cash flow is like heroin. It's freaking addictive. That was his, his exact words. And we've seen in our industry, a lot of guys do a launch and you know, they get their $300,000 and you know, they want to go out and buy a, you know, a nice fancy car and everything like that. And you know, that money goes pretty quick. I can show you how to spend 300 grand you know, uh, pretty quick, I promise you. Uh, and then next thing you know, maybe there's not another product and they go out and they do another product launch and maybe the product isn't as good, but now they need the money. They want to keep up that lifestyle. Uh, rather than creating a good product and finding an evergreen solution to it. Um, not lining up, but uh, anybody familiar with this here? Affiliate.com? All right, any customers here from Affiliate.com? Cool. Now, what do you, that launched on May 10th this year. We reopened the 2.0. Uh, that was just about a month ago. What do you guys think this is right here? What you're looking at right here is what was going on in my shopping cart for a completely different product. This was from one of my products that I sell through an evergreen webinar. Thank goodness for this business system because this was bringing in on average about $21,000 per day on autopilot while affiliate.com 2.0 bombed compared to the first launch. I don't expect anybody to feel sorry for us. But we did 2.3 million in the first launch, and we did 175,000 in the second launch. And I don't know what happened, to be honest with you. We had the affiliate support and same product, same message. So that's what I said. When you go, it's all you go for broke with a product launch. You know, it doesn't always come through for you. If you've got an evergreen business model, at least we had uh, these days where we were getting 14,000, 8,000. 9,000, 32,000, 40,000, 21,000, 24,000, 24,000 was coming in every day. That's what goes on with this uh, evergreen business system that I'm going to show you guys right now. Uh, so let me tell you why evergreen models are better. So like, we gave you the pros and cons of the product launch. I'll tell you about the evergreen uh, systems. Number one, obviously you can start with the low-hanging fruit. You can start with your JV partners. And the beautiful thing is you can go with one JV partner at a time. Uh, with the product launch, as I said, if, you, if uh, it's go for broke, if things don't go right, that was your one week to shine, and good luck trying to get everybody back again. Starting with the low-hanging fruit, you can work with one JV partner per week before you start going into media buying, and you're constantly improving from one partner to the other. And if things don't go right, if the video doesn't play, or if there was a problem with the replay or whatever, you don't have the you know, 50 affiliates all promoting at the same time. Next. When you have a good product and it converts well, the partners will seek you out. Funny thing about affiliate.com was the first time we opened it, it really was a great product. It truly is one of the best products we've ever put out. Um, but it was only open for 10 days. If you think about that, that just it doesn't make sense, right? If you look at like the Apple iPhone, they don't bring it out and say you have to buy it, and you've got 10 days to buy it, and we're never going to sell it again. The reason why we do that is for one reason, just one reason. Scarcity. Scarcity works. But what's the downside? Having to take your product off the market, a good product that people want, they're asking you, hey, can you buy it? No, you've got to wait till next year. All right? Here, 
we've got a good product, it converts well, customers are happy, we get everybody talking about it. People are lining up to, to promote it, we don't have to tell them, no, we're closed. So we just line them up one, one person at a time. Uh, obviously, you learn more every week, and you can constantly grow your business. So the worst week you're ever going to have is your, is your first week, and you get better every week. You increase your, your landing page conversions, your split testing, all those different things. Uh, this is an important one. You learn the value of a lead. Every single opt-in, you can put a dollar to that. Why is that important? That's it. Yeah. Now, if you know the value of a lead, you can go out and say, well, for every opt-in I'm getting, um, I'm making $43. So if you go out and you spend $46 to get that traffic, you're losing money. If you go out and you spend $10 and you're making $43, the next question becomes, how much of this traffic can I can buy? And that's a beautiful thing, and there's a lot of those traffic sources out there. But um, I'll be the first to tell you, you know, I worked you know, for many years calling myself an internet marketer, um, but I was a guy really that just you know, created pretty good products, uh, did some good marketing, had a good relationship with a lot of JV partners, and I took the easy road out, and I just had people mailing you know, my products for me. Uh, and that's one part of a business. It's one channel, an affiliate program. It's not the entire thing to a business, and it took me a few years to, you know, to come to the conclusion that when you, can, when you know the value of a lead, and again, thanks to you know, Rich Sheffern working with him over the years, um, you know the value of the lead, you don't have to rely as much on the JV partners, you can use that as extra, extra traffic, and you can go out and you can buy traffic, and you can set those programs on autopilot and just keep going into more and more sources. <clears throat> So here are the different places where you go after just the JV partners. Obviously, there's different uh, facets of online marketing. There's the good old tried and true Google AdWords, which still does work, by the way. I think uh, they've gotten beat up so much you know, because you know, Google sucks, let's all go to Facebook. But the truth is, uh, Google is still very, very effective. Uh, and there's a lot of people. I know Mike Hill is, uh, is, uh, is at this conference this weekend. I was talking with him. All his knowledge that he knows in the CPA world right now, those two things that you're seeing on the, on the slides right now, AdWords and Facebook, is where he's getting uh, the majority of his traffic. <clears throat> Media buys. Um, you can go to uh, uh, different traffic sources where you can actually buy advertising. And you can go to My Ads, that's uh, owned by, um, you know, that's all the, the Fox. Uh, news outlets and MySpace and all those different things. It's Pulse 360, Ad Sonar. Uh, believe it or not, if you've got good credit, you can go to Ad Sonar, fill out a credit application, and they'll give you probably twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars credit to go and use their advertising. Now, you got to pay that back in thirty days, so it's you know it's not like twenty grand that you can go use to you know go buy a car. You could use it in their network, uh, but you don't have to spend ten thousand dollars your first day. You can spend 10 bucks or 50 bucks or 100 bucks. And if you know the value of your lead, with some of the stuff that I'm going to show you and some of the stuff you've learned this weekend, now you can tap into their money, start being profitable and using their money to do it. <clears throat> CPA networks. Um, we were able to bring our product mainstream into the CPA network. If you have a product that appeals to the mass audience, you know, basically if there's, you know, if somebody can click on the front of MSNBC, and your product will appear, appeal, appeal to a mass market like that, you can do pretty well with the CPA networks. Now, it's not quite that easy. Um, you know, there's, there's uh, a lot that you have to know, but if you get some people in the networks to guide you with your offer and you do have the right offer, uh, the amount of traffic these boys can get you is just, you know, it's like doing a product launch every hour. Um, <clears throat> we, had, we had a problem with uh, one of the CPA networks, which was my fault, we started with one network, and we told them that we wanted to do a cap at 3,000 a day. And I was working with another network, and I went to another network, and I told them, hey, what do you, how, you know, give me some information about your network. I decided to go with them. He said, Mike, what's your budget? I said, 3,000 a day. I forgot to use the words cap. I never told them to cap it at 3,000 a day. So on, on Thursday, we went to 5,000, and on Friday, because we had to prepay, he said, Mike, do me a favor. Can you, uh, can, you, can you fund $10,000? Oh, you know what? It's Friday. Let's, um, let's pay for Saturday and Sunday, too. And I said, well, 
Why 10,000? I thought we were at 3,000. He says, well, you know, I don't want to tell people once they start sending the traffic to stop sending the traffic, uh, but we're probably not going to go through it. I said, okay. So I wired him 30 grand, and then I'm watching the stats come in. By Monday, he was already up to $60,000. And then by the time I got in touch with him, I said, whoa, slow this down. I don't even know how this is, you know, how this is converting yet. And he says, well, you understand, I can't just stop the traffic. You're going to be getting traffic over the next few days. And in five days, I went through $100,000, just, just like that. So, and, uh, and he laughed. I wasn't laughing. He said, Mike, that's about a tenth of the traffic that I can send you. So that was telling me like, like how much traffic is actually out there if you have a converting offer. Um, truth is, I went in too, too much. I paid too much per lead. But I got a lot of intelligence, and we brought in 80000 spent 100, but the intelligence that I got from that was probably worth 20,000 because now I was able to use it to go back and say, I'd like to use this publisher, get rid of this guy, pay this guy this amount, and we were able to go forward. But you have to be careful. That's, you know, you've probably heard those stories with CPA networks, and I thought it wasn't going to happen to me, and just leaving out one thing like telling them to cap got me in a little bit of trouble. Uh, renting email lists. Uh, there's lots of places out there where you can go, and people will do solo ads for you. In fact, there's guys in this industry that uh, do solo ads. And I don't know why they do it. If they would use my affiliate link, they'd make a lot more money. Um, some of you guys ever heard of the John Cornetta? Yeah. Uh, John, uh, John has, uh, he does a good job doing list building, and then he'll do like a solo ad for like $500, $500 and get you 1,000 clicks or something like that. If he was actually to use his affiliate link, instead of me paying him 500 bucks, I'd probably have to pay him about $5,000. So, so there's lots of people out there that you can just, um, just search um, solo ads, and you'll get a lot of people out there that'll get you some really, really targeted traffic pretty cheap as well. What's that one out there? Anybody know? I think it's called Safe Swaps. Sounds like a perverted network, but it's, uh, it's a network on... Uh, people that are rated by other marketers as to how their list performs, and you could buy, uh, buy a solo ad from them and, uh, at any amount of clicks that you want, or you can do a swap and say, I'll send you 1,000 clicks, you send me 1,000 clicks, over two weeks or over two days, whatever, and they'll work with people that have similar lists, and uh, uh, I forget who it was, I think it was Gary Ambrose uh, that told me about that and went in there. I was very surprised to see how much traffic uh, is available through those little networks. Uh, so again, just one more, uh, one more place where you can get traffic. Obviously, postcards um, are a very, very effective marketing tool. If you're capturing information from a prospect and they don't buy, it's great for follow-up as well. Uh, you can do print ads, old-fashioned marketing here, folks. But if there's you know, trade, trade magazines in your niche, you want to find out how much adver uh, advertisements cost, and you can buy ads in those magazines and be pretty effective with them. And uh, radio as well. We've, uh, we've been dabbling with radio. Met a guy at uh, Perry Belcher's event last, uh, last summer in Austin. And his name was Fred Katona. So I, I hunted him down and started talking to him about uh, going mainstream. Um, any of you guys listen to talk radio? Conservative radio? I listen, to, uh, I listen to a lot of conservative radio because I like to hear... Uh, a lot of the ads that are on there, and I hear a lot of marketers that I've actually been on stage with. I've heard uh, Drew Miles, he's on there all the time. Agora Publishing, if you've ever heard their commercial for, you know, the world is going to end in 24 hours, go to endofamerica17.com. Well, uh, from what I understand, you know, that, that particular product line from, uh, from Agora is just blowing it up, and they're using a, a very similar model to what I'm about to show you here, uh, and they're doing it on radio. And you hear Tony Robbins and Chet Holmes using radio. It can be very, very effective. And it's, it's pretty affordable, too. I was very surprised how affordable it is to be on national radio. Uh, and you can usually get on national radio in about four or five days once you've got your, your ad copy done. <clears throat> uh, and mobile. Um, mobile, obviously, you guys know is, you know is the way of the future. There's a lot of things when it comes to mobile, whether it's text or it's banner advertising or it's lead generation. But uh, if you just want to put a little star, just type in uh, lead generation through mobile. You'll find a lot of companies that come up. And what they'll do is they'll actually do the advertisement for you. And they'll say, give me your AWeber code. And that's it. And then leads will just start showing up in your AWeber. And then you just put them into an autoresponder to get them to your site. So a lot of people think mobile advertising, well, how's that going to work? You know, on this little iPhone, how am I going to make my presentation? 
Uh, mobile is more about lead generation, and then you market to them where they're used to it, on their iPad or in front of their, their desktop or their laptop. All right. Um, why the current methods are not as effective uh, as the evergreen models. OK, let's take away, but again, we didn't get to the evergreen model. I'm going to talk to you probably the way that we're all marketed today. Uh, you're marketing to people in the noise rather than when they're in a state. OK, you guys, uh, many of you know, uh, you know, have learned from Tony Robbins. You know, he talks about getting into a state, right? If you can get your prospect into a state where all the noise is out and they're focusing on you and nothing but you for 90 minutes, it's a lot better than marketing in the noise. And uh, Marketing the noise means you're marketing outside of the inbox. So I'm going to give you, <coughs> I'm going to give you an example of this. It's 11.30 at night. You're hearing, honey, when are you coming to bed? You say, in about 10 more minutes. And you know that really means about another hour and a half. And you're going through your inbox, and it says, how Google screwed me and made me $10,000 at the same time, something like that, right? You open up the email, you click on the link, and you hear Ryan Dice's voice. Hi, it's Ryan Dice. I'm going to show you why Google sucks and how when they screwed me, I turned that into a $10,000 blah, blah, blah with Facebook. And you're seeing a video, and there's no pause or play button, and you have no idea how long this video is. It's engaging, but you're saying, come on, Ryan, is this one of these 45-minute videos? I want to get to bed. I've got 30 more emails to do. So, you know, and you're kind of trapped. So what you, what you do is, you go back to your inbox, and you're going through a couple more emails. You go back because something sounds interesting, and, and you go through this, and, you know, this entire process. And the funny thing is, it still works. It still works. It's still one of the most effective ways. But it, there's so many flaws to it, because mo most of the people that you want, your targeted people, aren't even listening to your message. Um, same thing, you're marketing off banners and clicks. And you have to sell right away. You're going right into a pitch. These videos are the sales letters. They go right into a pitch right away because they have to, you know, it's, one, it's a one-shot deal at this point. And product launch or pre-launches, obviously now, uh, they telegraph what's happening. You know, they've become a commodity. So, you know, when we come to a page now and it says, you know, video one, video two coming soon, video three coming soon, and, you know, June 7th, we know what's going on. You know, it's, it's free content, but we know it's a product launch. We've seen, we've seen those before. So um, it's, it's become transparent. So people are more familiar to this, and they're less likely to feel like, oh, I'm getting free information for the sake of free information. And as I said, uh, all that stuff still works. But what if there was a better way? All right, so let me talk to you about just doing just webinars, some of the pros and cons, OK? The pros are you're marketing to a prospect at a time when you have a captive audience. So what's beautiful with a webinar is you capture them outside of their inbox, that same problem originally. But you get their attention for two minutes, and you say, hi, my name is Jim. I'm going to be doing a, uh, a webinar over the next you know, few days or on Thursday or whatever the case is. And I'm going to be teaching you all these different things. Come with a legal pad. At that point, the customer gets to schedule a time that works best for them. And it's kind of like coming to this event. I have your attention right now. It's pretty much the same thing on a webinar. People are telling their, their kids, hey, you know, go downstairs. Mommy or daddy is watching a webinar, and you've got your notes out. Uh, and it's a completely different experience than when you just clicked out of your inbox trying to watch a 30-minute video. At this point, it's an opportunity to get the prospect into a state. Uh, time is suspended to, uh, to the viewer, viewer when uh, the information is the only thing that matters, just as we said before. Um, Prior to the webinar, you can indoctrinate your prospect about who you are, why they should listen to you, why you're the real deal, right? So think about it. I, not only do I have a 90-minute opportunity, a 60-minute or 90-minute opportunity to give you a full presentation like I'm doing now where I have your attention, but the two to three days before the webinar, I can send you free reports. I can send you a, a video of me, video of me on stage. Uh, all these different types of things that, that are making you realize this is, this is a person I want to learn for, from. This is an event that I can't miss. Uh, when you do it out of the inbox and they land right on a video, you've got like 30 seconds to get your, their attention. It doesn't matter how great the rest of that video is. If you don't get their attention in the first 30 seconds, they're going to pop out of that page. Um, you have a lead-in. You have a hook. Okay, that's the beautiful thing about webinars is you're offering free training. That's a good, good little tip that you want to... 
uh, right down here. One of the important things that you want to do when you're doing a webinar is not focus on your product. You don't want to focus on uh, what you're going to be selling. In fact, you don't even want to let them know necessarily that there is something going to be selling. You want to let them know that you're giving away free content. And you should. Like, the content should be something that is just, uh, you know, uh, where the people don't feel like they were manipulated, like they took notes and they're ready to send you a thank you email at the end of the webinar. <clears throat> uh, and you get a full 90 minutes to make the perfect presentation, build credibility and everything. Kind of like when you see somebody on stage, their first slide starts saying, so who am I and why you should listen to me? Well, I've been, you know, I've run Fortune 500 companies, all those types of things. You get to, you get to do that on, the, on a webinar and build credibility. Uh, you educate your prospects on every single thing they need to make an informed decision. You can slow things down a little bit for the prospect. You don't have to leave certain things out for the sake of trying to keep a video under 20 minutes. You're teaching them good content, but by doing so, you're allowing them a way to do it faster and better, or what we call the accelerated way, with your product. So a lot of times you'll see, so here's, Here's, everything. Here's how you can advertise with Facebook, and I just showed you all the different ways to do it. But if you want the shortcuts, here's my product. Your non-buyers leave happy, and they actually thank you. It's, it's just uh, it's a wonderful and also amazing thing when I see somebody sending me an email after the webinar and say, thanks, Mike, that was great content. And I'll go check to see if they bought, and they didn't buy. And I'm like, wow, think about that. You're getting thanked for making a presentation, which is really good for your reputation and your brand online. People don't see you as, you know, as selling, they see you as somebody putting out free content. Uh, this is an important one. The buyers understand what they're getting. They're happier customers, they're more loyal, and there's less refunds. Your merchant account, uh, you know, one of the things you want to protect with your merchant account is chargebacks. And you'll see very few chargebacks about people uh, you know, feeling like they saw one thing and bought another. They know what they're getting with this. Also, a webinar happens live, so you know, people aren't trying to fast forward. You know, they're, they're consuming your message exactly the way that you intended. They know everything about the product, and you have extremely low refunds and less chargebacks. Uh, webinars, uh, their auditory, visual, kinesthetic aspects, uh, and thus has the highest conversions of any method of selling on par with speaking from the stage. And I know this because I've done almost uh, all the different types of marketing you know, uh, out there. I've done it with sales letters. I've done it with video. I've done the hybrids. I've done webinars. And I've spoken from stage. And a webinar will be the most effective way that you can sell any product online. If you're not doing webinars, guys, right now, I'm telling you, if there's, if there's you know, a couple of things that you're saying you're taking home from, from this weekend, putting a, a webinar into your arsenal is what you really want to make sure you're doing. It'll change everything for you. Uh, some of the cons of doing a webinar. <clears throat> they can be tiring. I know it's stupid to say that you, know, you can make $20,000 a week or $20,000 a month doing webinars, but you have to be on the webinar every Tuesday at 7, every Thursday at 7, and every Friday at 7. I mean, we're kind of spoiled, right? <laughs> you know, right? To say, well, I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to be trapped and actually work three hours a week. But I know it sounds silly, but it, it can be tiring. It gets in the way. Hey, do you want to go see, um, you know, you want to go see Thor or you want to go see, you know, some movie tonight? No, I can't. Friday night. I got that webinar. And it just gets in the way. If you can automate your business, uh, it makes things a lot easier. So um, <clears throat> webinars are not always scripted uh, when they're live. Kind of like me, like on stage right now. You're winging it. It's the slide approach. What that means is the slide comes up, you look at the bullet point, and then you talk. Uh, but what happens when you do that, sometimes you leave out key things. Sometimes you tend to run on about things that don't matter. Maybe it's topical and it's... It's uh, New Year's or it's Christmas and you're just talking for 10 minutes about you know, what you did on your vacation or, yeah, you know, I was with the Mavericks last week and we were jumping out of a plane at 30,000 feet. Me, 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 me. has nothing to do with the, with the, with the person listening to the webinar. And uh, you know, sometimes you forget the guarantee. 
Sometimes the person helping you doing the webinar doesn't show up. Sometimes you're on the webinar and in the middle of talking, you're hearing beep, beep, beep. You ever been on those webinars? Where every single time somebody's coming on the webinar, there's a beep, and it's like you're trying to enjoy the content, but it's just, it's, so, it's annoying, and it's annoying for the person doing the presentation. You're hearing, can somebody look into those beeps, find out why those beeps are going off? Um, sometimes you have a sore throat, and sometimes you do $25,000 on a webinar, and the next time you think you did the same exact thing, and you do 1,300, the same amount of people. You start questioning, I don't know, was it his list compared to this person's list? Well, you know what happened? You forgot to talk about the guarantee this time, and you went way too long you know, on uh, talking about this part of the presentation. So my point is, doing a webinar isn't always consistent. The time is not always great. It's not always prime for your prospect. All right? So uh, we have anybody in, in here from Australia or New Zealand in here? Okay, so Ed, right? Okay, so, uh, so you guys know what it's like when somebody wants to do a webinar at 7.30 p.m. on a Thursday. Oh, well, that's great. You know, that's like, uh, what is that, at 5.30 uh, in the morning on a Wednesday for you? <clears throat> right, yeah. So, so uh, it's very difficult to tell somebody that's you know, on another part of the world or even... Uh, let, let's say even in you know, Germany or, or the UK, if you're doing a 9 o'clock webinar, uh, for the people in the UK, you know, that's, that's 2 o'clock in the morning, a 9 o'clock webinar. And that's when it starts. When it ends, it's 3, 3.30 in the morning. So a lot of the English-speaking countries you know, are you know, South Africa, Thailand, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, um, Australia, New Zealand, uh, and of course the UK. And if you're doing a webinar, and, you know, quote, Eastern time like that, you're really catering towards the people in the United States. And so, you know, even if you're doing six, six o'clock Eastern time, that's not really good for the people here on the West Coast, because that's three o'clock. A lot of them are working. Uh, to do more time slots is, well, more time, and it requires you to do more work. You have to actually work another 90 minutes. Uh, you know, can you imagine right, having to work another 90 minutes to make $20,000? Um, and your guests, as we said, uh, you know, I'm ahead of myself, they don't always show up, sometimes you have bad audio, uh, and technology issues. All right, so the automated webinar, so the word here is in red, the word automated webinar. It's a hybrid. It's a hybrid of using a video, right? You can even use Josh Bartlett's Easy Video Player, okay? And it's a hybrid of a video and a webinar. It's pre-recorded and therefore scripted. Underline this one, guys, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna do this. When you're using Keynote or PowerPoint, on the right side, on the left side are all your different slides, right? On the right side is the big window where you're working on that particular template. And at the bottom, there's a little strip like that called Notes. That's where you're gonna actually script out your webinar like a sales letter. If there's an um or an ah, it's deliberate, because you maybe wanted to make it more natural. But you're actually reading copy from every single slide. So you're not doing some of the things that I'm doing now. You're not going, uh, so, okay, let's move on. And you're not, you're not jumping around like that. You're, every single word, just like, written, like a sales letter, is perfect, and you don't have words that don't belong there and you have just the right amount of words to make the perfect presentation. Now, uh, when I was working with Rich Sheffern and we were sharing some of the stuff uh, that he was doing and what I was gonna be doing, I went down, spent three days with Rich, and this was one of the things that he told me. I said, I said to him, Rich, was that scripted? He, and he opened it up and he says, Mike, not only scripted, I'm reading every single slide. So when you have Camtasia or ScreenFlow open and you're reading, if you're reading a paragraph and you stumble, you stop, you pause, leave five seconds so that when you're editing you see that blank space and you know that's an edit spot, and you go back and you reread that spot over again, and you have what you're, you're now developing a perfect presentation. All right? And uh, you know, the, the person watching the webinar, they don't notice because you don't notice when things are good. It's, you're just expecting, it's captivating, right? It's like, it's like a good singer. It's like a good magician on stage. You really notice, like the pattern interrupt comes like, you know, when, when they're juggling and the ball falls. 
You know, and then they go down and pick it up and something in your head goes for a second. What, was that on purpose? Oh no, oh, they made a mistake. All right, but you don't notice when things are going good and that's why you want your presentations to be scripted. <clears throat> They're, now that it's, auto, it's uh, pre-recorded, it's perfect and it's a consistent message and your conversions are identical with similar traffic sources, like an opt-in page. So remember before I was saying, you know, you're wondering, you know, how come that webinar did 20,000 and this one only did 7,000? We had just as many people on. Well, when you, when you have an, an automated webinar that's delivering the presentation for you, it's like a landing page. If I say to you, what's your opt-in page converting at? You say 33%. Well, guess what? Tomorrow it's going to convert at 33%. A week from now it's going to convert at 33%. And a month ago it probably converted at 33%. Wouldn't you rather have that consistency with your webinar as opposed to wondering one day it's going to do 8% and the next day it's going to do 1% and you're going to wonder like what you did wrong? I did a lot of speaking over the years. And, uh, and Gary Ambrose, he was in here just a minute ago, uh, he'll tell you. Oh, there he is. Gary, how, how many times did we knock it dead on one presentation, do the same presentation a month later to a similar crowd and we were wondering why we were the guy that made no sales that week? Every other week. There, there's something we don't know. And you're constantly changing up your presentation, saying to another speaker, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch up my clothes. I'm going to do what you did. Because you're always second guessing. You, you really don't know what worked. But if you have a conversion here that's working, it's going it's, to, it's, it's, people, you know, we're, we're human beings. We act, we act the same consistently. That's why we split test, right? Over a thousand people this way, a thousand people this way, it converted better this way. Well, rest assured, we stopped doing it this way and we continue to do it this way. Because future humans that see the page are going to react the same way. It's the same thing here. Is that all making sense? Good. <clears throat> okay. It's not live. It's an event. All right? And you never want to use the words live. If you go through mine, you guys seen Frank Kern do this, right? Uh, anybody been on Frank's webinar? He's he, advertising all over your Facebook. I'm sure you're seeing him all the time, right? And you click on and you register for one of his webinars. Um, I'm, I hope you guys know that Frank's not always on those webinars, right? right? No, those are automated webinars. <clears throat> and you're also seeing um, Rich Sheffrin do this as well. One thing you won't see us say is, meet me live. Because it's not live. And you don't want to say it's live because that would be misleading. That would be a lie. But it's an event, and the best way I can I can tell you um, I can tell you how this works is um, Tony Robbins does something called um, UPW, right? Uh, and you can go do a UP you can go to a UPW event, and you sit in a room like this, and Tony's in Fiji somewhere, or at home, or sleeping, or whatever he's doing, and you're seeing a presentation that Tony did two years ago. It's the same content. You're learning the same message. So sometimes Tony does a live event, and uh, in fact, when I went to see Tony in New Jersey, the first two days was Tony live, and the next day, I was with Tom Beal, and we wake up, and we go to see Tony, and he's not there. We find out Tony left, and there was a, a video presentation about Tony talking about how to get your life in order with health. Okay, that's, that's essentially what your webinar is. It's an event. The content is the same, but you don't want to tell people that it's live. So when you come to my pages, it says something like, hi, it's Mike same. I'm going to be doing a webinar over the next four days. And I'll point to the days where the webinar is. Um, I never say it's live when we get started. I never say, thanks for joining, we're live. I'm not trying to uh, give that sense that it's, that it, that it's live. Now, I will tell you something that I do that, that does increase our conversions. Everybody that has attended our webinar, when, they, when you're at the webinar room, on the right side of the room, it says webinar attendees. And anybody that's ever seen a webinar, I store their name in a database and I populate that in there. So you're not actually watching the webinar with those people, but it makes your enjoyment better. Because there could be lots of people all over the world that are watching it. Um, but what I refer to that is like a laugh track. Right? When you're watching a sitcom and you know, they say something funny and then that fake laughter goes in, okay, that's, that's done just for your enjoyment. It's the same thing here. Uh, we're making the, the webinar environment simulated so that you're getting the feeling of watching it with, uh, with other people. 
And that uses what influence uh, tactic? tactic? Social proof, exactly. You guys are good. Good. Okay, here, you can do several days a week and several times a day. So, imagine you have a product and you want to get up on stage. And you say, hey, Trey, can I get on stage? And he says, yeah, you can get on my, my next event. And you get up on stage and you get in front of 300 or 400 people and you give away good content and you say, so if anybody's interested, meet me at the back of the room and 25 people show up at the back of the room and buy your product for 997 bucks. That's pretty cool. What's the next thing you want to do immediately at that point? Get on another stage, right? While it's fun, I can tell you, it's, you know, it can be exhausting and it takes away from your business. What if you could be on stage four days a week and four times a day and get the equivalent of 16 stage presentations a day and you don't even have to show up? I hope you're starting to see how this you know, starts coming together. If we go all the way back, do you guys remember the slides I showed you where we had a, you know, a $14,000 a day, a $24,000 a day, a $40,000 a day? I wasn't doing anything those days. Actually, I was stressed out of my mind doing a product launch while you know, somebody else was showing up and doing my presentation for me with a perfect voice, a perfect script, doesn't forget the guarantee, and closes the same every single time, like clockwork. You simply feed the front end at this point, and the money comes out the back. That's it. The only goal at this point, once this is in motion, is just get people to convert at an opt-in form to learn something for free. All right, here's something that's important, though. All right? Remember we said you want to focus on training? So you have to have a hook, OK? Um, the seven biggest mistakes people make when doing X, Y, Z, or whatever the case is. You have to get people to want to get on your webinar. It's important. They, people want free training. If they're not excited to show up at your webinar with a pen and a legal pad and close the door and tell their, you know, their spouse and kids that, you know, I need alone time for you know, 90 minutes to an hour, then you didn't do your job right. If you're telling them, you know, get on and I'm going you know, to talk to you about my, my home study course, they're not going to be quite as excited. Next, your hook has to tie into your product. This is a key. So you can't just take my first bit of advice there and say, all right, I'm going to offer free training you know, on real estate, and now I'm going to teach you this completely different, real, uh, buy my real estate product that's completely different than the training. Training may have been very, very good. But if you're talking about short sales over here, and now your product doesn't talk about short sales, they'll say, yeah, the content was great, but you're not getting me excited to buy this product. So your free training needs to lead right into where they're just so excited that they see, OK, I see how this works. I want to know more. <clears throat> this is interesting. The sales will show up at consistent times throughout the day, right? Because my webinars go off at certain points throughout the day. We do four webinars a day. I have a one shopping cart app on my iPhone. Five o'clock webinar goes off at five. The call to action is one hour and 30 minutes into the presentation. So at 6.30, I'll open up my, my iPhone, and I'll just hit refresh, refresh, refresh. And every few minutes, you see 1997, 389 by 6, 1997, 19, and then it just stops. And that's it. There's no more sales. Three hours later, same thing happens again, four times a day. <clears throat> this is good, because if, um, depending on the software you use, you get questions. And you, can, uh, you have a little box, ask your question here, and you can use the questions to gather intelligence, make more sales, help support, build an FAQ, and increase conversions. So let, let's take those down. Number one, you're gathering intelligence. People are telling you, um, and if you can, try to get the time that the question came in, because if you're getting a question at a certain time, you know in the presentation where it needs to be addressed if you're going to go back and redo it. But remember, I said, the first webinar you do is the worst it's ever going to get. It's only going to get better from here. Now you're getting intelligence from your customers. Maybe they're saying something like, does this work on a Mac? And you're saying, wow, that's interesting. My software works in a web browser, but they keep asking that question. So the only thing you want to do at this point is just go back and either put something under the video or in the video that says works on a Mac or PC. So you're not building that tension for the person where they're feeling, oh, I have to sit all the way through this and find out it doesn't work. It's just an example. Uh, make more sales. You get their name, their email, and their phone number. 
And you could either outsource this to a call center, or you can have somebody in-house do it, or you can just reach out to them via email. So, hey, Barbara, I noticed that you had a question about uh, this on the webinar yesterday. Yes, I did. Um, well, here's how it works. Does that answer your question? Yes. Did you get into the program? No. Why not? Answer the objection, and then take a credit card over the phone. Uh, as I said, support, and you're, you're building your FA, FAQ that you can use, and all these things help increase your conversions. So here's what you want to focus on. A uh, little uh, acronym here, CSSCF. All right? So these are the things that you want to focus on on your webinar. <clears throat> the conversion, C. First C, conversions of your landing page. It's one of the most important things probably that you've got to focus on. I'll explain why in just a minute. <clears throat> The show rate on your webinar, right? Got to go to the extremes here. If you have a 100% conversion rate on the webinar registration, but you have a zero show rate on the webinar, you're not going to do very well. Stick rate on your webinar. That means out of the people that show up, how many people stay to the end? OK, great. Your, your, paid, your registration page is converting at 40%. So for every 100 people, 40 people register. Your show rate is 50%. So out of those 40 people that registered, 50% of them showed up. How many people made it to the end of the webinar? Two. You've got a major problem. You're boring the hell out of people somewhere, and you need to identify that. Because if they're not sticking around, this is another place where it's, it's breaking along the pipeline. Obviously, the next C is the conversions on the webinar. So you got a great landing page. They're showing up. Your content is great, but they're not buying. We've got to find out why. And in many cases, they're going to buy. If, if they're sticking through your presentation, I can promise you, you're going to have a pretty good conversion rate. Probably going to be converting somewhere around 8 or 9% of your buyers for a high-ticket item of $497 to $997, all the way up to $1,997. <clears throat> The next, uh, next one is the final one, F, your follow-up process. Okay. People registered for the webinar, but they didn't show up. They get a separate follow-up sequence. People registered for the webinar, they showed up, but they left. That's a separate follow-up sequence. People showed up for the webinar, and they, they, uh, they registered, they showed up, they stayed all the way to the end, they saw the price, they didn't buy. It's another follow-up sequence. See, it's different. This one, I know you saw the, the offer. I can say, uh, hey, Greg, um, we noticed that you stayed on the webinar the other day. Did you notice we had a payment plan? Did you forget that we have a double your money back guarantee? How about if we also threw in this additional training program, whatever the case is? But you can't have that same follow-up sequence to the guy that didn't show up for the webinar. All right, so you have to, you have, to have these sequences here. Um, here's a bonus slide. Uh, using a pre-sell landing page works incredible to getting people to register for the webinar, and if you follow what's called the EPC, the effective earnings per click, from that first click, the people that go through a pre-sell page before they get on the webinar are more likely to show up on the, uh, get on the webinar, show up on the webinar, and buy. It's more believable. <clears throat> now, if you're looking at this page, this is actually one of my pages, all right? It, it, uh, it looks very similar to what is known as a fake news site. Now, those things are very, very, very dangerous to the point where if you're doing these types of tactics, the FTC is going to come after you. They're going to seize your assets and all that, all that crap, okay? So guys that do this, are lying to people. Number one, li listen to the words there, fake news. It's fake. They're talking about something that's not true, and they're reporting it as news. So what we're doing here is we're using the word uh, magazine, <clears throat> and everything on our, on our site here is actually true. The woman that you see on the, the left side of the page is actually a reporter that uh, interviewed me, and on the right is an actual, that's my employee for the video. Uh, that when we were on the news, and we just basically featured that story, and then we're, we're using that to say, if you'd like to learn more from this person, click here. Alex Mondozian once said, nothing sells better than the truth. Just remember that. Use the truth in your marketing. If there's ever a point where what you're doing is not true, even by if you sold 80 units, 
and uh, you're saying you sold 100, well then just say you sold 80, because it's true. You know, nothing sells better than truth. It just, there's like a vibe that comes out about it. And you know, we all know, right, when that bullshit factor goes up, you know, come on guys, we've all seen those ClickBank videos, right? <laughs> the, you just know there's something, something going on that's just not, not true. And sure, people buy those ClickBank products, uh, you, know, with, with those, you know, the ones that we know that we're talking about, but they have, uh, they have refund rates, you know, as high as 50%, and they're getting kicked out of ClickBank. So let's not, let's not even look at those guys and say, well, if they're doing it, we can do it, all right? But if you have a pre-sell page, that could be a blog post on your own page with only, with, that looks like it might have different call to actions, but all your banners are actually for your product, all your videos are related to your product, and all the links actually go to your landing page. You can make a blog post look like this. Just make sure it's telling your story. All right? <clears throat> different traffic sources get different landing pages. This is one of the pages that I use for Facebook. Um, and if you see the, on this one here, up at the top it says, I'm giving away free training this week to anyone looking to create a profitable business online. It took me about six weeks to get my ad approved for Facebook. And they don't tell you why, they just keep saying, copy paste guidelines, copy paste, look at our guidelines. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong here? This is embarrassing. I'm a marketer, I'm seeing all my friends get on Facebook, I can't get my ad approved. In my case, you know what it was? My landing page had a dollar sign on it and I was gonna teach something related to that dollar sign. Big no-no for Facebook. So as soon as I took off any dollar sign on there and we put, I'm giving away free training. I also took away all the sales copy. The more copy you have, the more they're gonna dislike. So it was just a video and finally we got approved. Here's a, here's a landing page that we use for, um, for uh, mass market. Mass market, believe it or not, we use the pre-sell page first and then the pre-sell page goes to this landing page. Uh, here's a little tip that we do. We dynamically put a picture of the affiliate that's promoting for us. That's a good tip if you can get that done in your software. Uh, so if somebody's promoting, let's say Ryan Lee, and uh, people don't know me, they show up at this page and it says presenter Mike feels same, but there's nothing, nothing else on there, they don't care. But as soon as they see Ryan Lee's face, they say, oh, I know Ryan, I'm on his list. He's the host, I'm gonna get on, I'm gonna get on this webinar. Ryan's not even on the webinar, he's just a host. We put a picture there. Best way I can give that example, who here knows Tim Ferriss, right? Four hour work week, four hour body. Let's say you had a health product. Tim Ferriss just did the four hour body and now he's gonna promote your health webinar. And they get to the page and they see your picture. Do you think they'd be more likely to opt in with just your picture or your picture and Tim Ferriss's picture on there? Obviously. So we've seen a 7% increase on conversion just by putting the picture of the person that's, uh, that's promoting for us. And in this case, it was Ryan Lee. Um, and here's another slide that we use for, uh, for some internet marketers that, that want to keep things, let's call it less hypey, right? This one here, a little bit of hype, right? It, you know, it's got, it's got more of that, you know, glitzy, you know, landing page look to it. Um, some marketers had asked, hey, can you tone it down a little bit for my list? Absolutely. And different traffic sources, different landing pages. Uh, next, success is in the follow-up. So when you go to my page and you exit out, you don't register, exit pops, we all know how these, uh, how these work, we've seen them. All right, one exit pop, guys, that's it. You don't need seven exit pops. I can guarantee you they don't get on on the seventh. I think we, we all know how annoying that is. All right, put audio, auto-loading audio on your exit pops. All right, wait, don't leave empty-handed. Got that one from Ryan and Perry. Ryan Dice and Perry Belcher. Those are some strong words, guys. Wait, don't leave empty-handed. And at that point, just recap the offer that they didn't see in the four-minute video real quick. Wait, don't leave empty-handed. Before you go, simply give your name and email address and I'll give you my free report valued at whatever. And I don't know why this works, but for every 100 opt-ins we get, 17 of them come from the exit pop. That's pretty big. That's a lot of wasted traffic if you don't have one of those on your page. All right, so you put the exit pop on there. Now this guy just said he's not interested in registering for the webinar. So don't follow up to get him to register for the webinar. He was on the page. You said, hey, register for my web, and he popped out. 
So now that you have their name and email from the exit pop, don't ask them to register for the webinar. They've already said they're not interested. So what do you do? What does it say, right? Just follow up with the replay. Just send them directly to the replay video right in the first email. Here's your free report. By the way, here's a replay of the webinar. <clears throat> After they register, um, you follow up before the webinar. So if there's five days before they join the webinar or three days, whatever, you want to say, you have three days left, here's a free report. There are two days left, here's a cheat sheet you can use to take notes. There are two days left, here's a free mind map. There's one day left, the webinar starts tomorrow. And then the day the webinar starts, three emails. The webinar starting today, the webinar starts at three hours, and the webinar starts in five minutes. <clears throat> you also, if you can, use uh, text messages and voice broadcasts. You know, because we get busy, right? I've, I've forgotten to get on my own webinars that I know I've got to be on in 10 minutes. I've got to do a training webinar, and then all of a sudden somebody's showing me a YouTube video, and then 20 minutes later my phone's going off, and it's Chris Farrell saying, Mike, what happened? I'm like, oh my God, I forgot to get on the webinar. So trust me, if I can forget to get on my own training webinars, uh, the customer that wants your information is going, to forget, uh, is going to forget 10 minutes before it starts. So what I do is I use a company called VoiceShot, and I dial right to their phone, and I say, hi, it's Mike Same. Just wanted to let you know the webinar that you registered, registered for has just started. And there's limited space. And, you know, and then I give them a nice URL, like go to you know, uh, seethewebinarnow.com, something that they don't have to check their inbox. They can just type it, and I redirect it. Uh, I, I got 48 seconds left, so I'm going to move quick. I, we, we only have a few more slides, so we should be OK. Um, as we said, you want to follow up in the different sequences, follow up to the people that showed up, but they left, uh, the people that saw the offer but didn't buy, and obviously you follow up to your customers with fulfillment. Now the success is in the follow-up. Okay, there's two types of replays that you need to follow up with. Uh, one is called the replay and one is called the buy now replay. So if somebody was on the webinar but they got out after they never saw the offer, you want to follow up with a replay that does not have an add to cart button. Because if they got out seven minutes into the webinar, you don't want that add to cart button showing up and then they're, they're seeing the price is $997. You want, to, you want them to consume the entire message and get the add to cart button when the time is right. But if you're in a sequence where you know the customer has seen the price, this is a different replay that has the add to cart button right there. Because if this person saw the webinar on a Thursday, got paid on a Friday, and has the money in their PayPal account, and now they want to buy, you don't want to put them through a 90-minute presentation where they have to wait for the Add to Cart button to show up. So just have that button right there for them. So maybe there's just a question they wanted to see 10 minutes in. Up, oh, answered my question. It works on a Mac, whatever. Click that Add to Cart button, and they can buy. So you need two, two replays for each sequence. Uh, I'll go a little quick here. Obviously, you want to have FAQ pages in your follow-up sequences. Send them to testimonials on the third day. Uh, these are the different things you want to track uh, d through different traffic sources, right down to the sub ID. Um, your landing page conversion, track your show rate, track your stick rate, how many people show up, how many people actually stay on the webinar to the end, your dollar per registration. All right? So, what that means is if you made $100,000 and you had 100,000 people register for the webinar, well, then you're making $1 per registration. If you had 10,000 people show up for the webinar and you made $100,000 and you're making $10 a reg. But what you're going to see, it's more like having 1,000 people register for the webinar and you'll make $100,000 and now you're making $100 per registration. So imagine that. People just give you their name and email and you're making about $100 per registration. These numbers are, are true. Trey, didn't you talk about uh, webinars uh, like, uh, that, that you did, right? Yeah, and, and you had some pretty incredible numbers per registration. Yeah, it was uh, $205 per registration, per person that showed up, rather, per attendee. Oh, per attendee. Yeah. Okay, yeah, which was, so probably about $100 per registration because it's about a 50% show yeah, rate. Yeah, that would make, yeah, around there. All right, guys, I don't know if I can translate that to you, but um, you've got a squeeze page. They give your name and email address, and then you send them to your sales letter for your $47 product, and three out of 100 people buy the $47 product as opposed to getting $100 just if they give you their name and email. If you do the math there, it's staggering, the difference. Um, you want to, uh, let's just go back. You, you have the dollar per registration. Then as Trey just said, the dollar per attendee. You want to track that. How much money are we making if they show up? Because then you know how much money you're leaving on the table. You can say, holy shit. We only had 30% of the people show up 
And when they show up, we're making $200 an attendee. There is so much opportunity there for the other 70%. You, you've got a problem getting people excited about your webinar. If you do a better job there, you're going to make a lot more money. Okay? Uh, the dollar per offer seen. I don't know if you track that one, Trey. That's a good one because if you're tracking what, how much money you made if they actually stayed on the webinar, you'll see that number be somewhere around 378. Then you realize, okay, how do we make sure they don't leave? Promise them something for free at the beginning of the webinar. Hey, guys, uh, I'm going to give you free access to an entire module of this. Other customers have paid this. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you a, a promo code at the end of the webinar. And remind them a couple of times. And then they'll stay to the end, or be more likely. Uh, find out when they're getting out. Find out when they're leaving. Because if you find out that you know, you're seeing the spike right here at 32 minutes, there's something going on at 32 minutes that they don't care about or is too confusing, and you've just showed them that this is too confusing for them and it's not going to work. You've got to get it out of your slide. You've got to believe in the numbers. Uh, when you know your dollar per registration, you can buy more profitable traffic than you would ever imagine. It changes the game. It changes the game. People start seeking you out, and the next thing you know, um, you know you're the next Mike Geary. You know, with truth about abs or you know these, uh, a product like that or some people will start seeking you out. Um, webinar dollar per registrations are usually so high, therefore you can now take your business to another level. I have yet to do a type of advertising where we weren't profitable. Some of them were just too complicated or waited too long to get in the magazine. Took three, you know two months to get in the magazine, and then when we finally found out it made money, now to go rerun it, it takes another two months to get into the next magazine. I'd rather put an ad up on Facebook or do a media buy and get an instant result. And then the next question, as I said, is, wow, how much of this can you buy? And if they, you can spend a thousand a day or a hundred a day, you buy up all the inventory and you put it on autopilot. Price points for webinars: forty-seven dollars to nine ninety-seven is ideal. 1997 if you've got an extraordinary product but I would recommend 497 to 997 all right so here's a question before I leave um, whatever your product is right now what would it feel like if you guys were making an extra 100 100 sales per month for your product if you could do the math for that okay do the math for what would an extra 100 sales a week mean to your business and then finally, 100 sales a day. These numbers are real, they're attainable, and you can do it if you look into that, um, that uh, evergreen model I just went over with you. Um, the, the question everybody has at this point you know, is, what software do you use? There's a lot of different software out there, um, and obviously, uh, I'm gonna be coming out with a software in about two weeks that does this down to everything that uh, that I believe is important to track, and you'll probably be hearing about that soon. But I'm done. I've hogged the stage about five minutes too long, and I've got to let my friend Frank Kern get on the stage, guys. So I'm done. Thanks a lot. I'll talk to you soon.